Uh, thank you, and thank you the organizers for the invitation. It's always nice to be in Lumini. So what I want to present uh, today is a joint work uh, uh, in progress with uh, Pierre Colmes and Sally Gilles, who is, who is here actually, both of them are here. And uh, it concerns uh, duality theorems for uh, proetalco homology, so periodic proetalco homology for uh, analytic, rigid analytic spaces. So analytic space for us is a rigid analytic space. And we started uh, with computation. So we studied, we studied these cohomologies uh, uh, because we, um, we were interested in certain applications to, to periodic long lines. But, uh, uh, but actually, uh, there is a lot of foundational issues along the way. So this is one of them. And uh, we were starting, we had no idea what these cohomologies look like. So we started to compute them uh, for curves uh, in the arithmetic case. Uh, so I mean, uh, you look at variety over the so curve, analytic curve over, uh, say, finite extension of QP, and uh, you check uh, how it looks like, and uh, both the compactly supported and not the compactly supported. And, and it seems that uh, it looked to us like there was a Poincaré duality. And, uh, on the other hand, when we look at uh, the algebraic setup, so you look for, uh, uh, at the curve, which is now defined over CP, and you look at the proetal cohomology, compactly supported, not compactly supported, then it looked like the naive Poincaré duality doesn't work. So we needed something else. And uh, that's what I want to present, uh, um, that uh, if you, uh, it's, what we get is some kind of a Verdier type duality. You have non-trivial X groups. So I also would like to schedule, maybe, I don't know, maybe I run out of time at the end, that we have some ideas how one can proceed in, in dimension higher than one. And so we have a strategy for that, and maybe we can make it work. So I start with the arithmetic case. So because we will need Galois duality, so we are going to assume here that K is over QP uh, uh, finite. So C would be the same as CP, uh, so it's uh, QP algebraically closed and completed, and OK would be integers in, inside K, and the residue field finite extension of FP will be, will be small k. So the first theorem, so I will mention two main theorems here, so the first one, is of the following uh, form. So we are looking at uh, smooth, geometrically irreducible dagger variety. So uh, this is for us, for topological reasons, it's easier for us to work with uh, Rigid analytic varieties with overconvergent structure shifts. So, dagger varieties of dimension 1 over, over k. Then we have the following claim that uh, we have uh, a trace map. which goes from H4. So uh, we are looking at Poincaré duality uh, uh, type statement in, uh, of, in uh, the arithmetic situations. So we are going to combine the geometric uh, duality uh, with the uh, Galois duality. So we are going to get four here. So we are going to have four with twist two. We have a trace uh, map isomorphism, and then Poincaré duality. So we have the pairing between HI QPJ and H4 minus I. Now, so I'm going to skip the proetal. Just put C here. X QP2 minus J goes to H4, T, X, Q, P, 2, and then by the trace map goes to Q, P. 
So we have this pairing is perfect. It's a perfect pairing. So what do we mean by that? That, we, that is, we want both maps here, which you obtain from that to be topological isomorphism. So one map is HI X QPJ into H4 minus IC X QP to minus I and the dual, and this should be topological. So uh, there, there are two basically types of topologies you see here. So for uh, if, if you have a Stein, so the nicest is the situation is when you have a Stein curve, then this is just fresher. Okay, but uh, if you have Dagger, then this is going to be L, uh, L, L, F or LB. Okay, then you have the, the other one. And you have a topological isomorphism with H4I XQP. Okay. So I want to make remarks about this statement before, before I uh, sketch the proof of, of this. And um, so first of all, I mean, uh, uh, I want to show what type of groups we get we get for these spaces. So let's, um, let's start with, though with the definition. So uh, I want to define what we mean by compactly supported cohomology. So some remarks. So um, just for Stein spaces, for simplicity. So if X is Stein, then uh, we, will we define compactly supported pro et al cohomology with these coefficients as the mapping fiber of uh, the, forget this, cohomology of the total space, and then cohomology of the boundary of that space. Okay, and now what is the cohomology of the boundary? So this, by definition, is uh, is a limit of cohomologies of x minus z, where z is finite union of affinoid. Okay, so. Um, The remark I want to make is that uh, this is not the same definition as Huber. I mean, it is not the same as Huber's definition in the of the other coefficients. So Huber defines his compactly supported cohomology with torsion coefficients, uh, and then so and that, in that case, this definition would give you the same the same answer as uh, the same and the, uh, the same object as his. Uh, and also with integral coefficients, with ZP, for example, you would get the same definition as his, but with QP coefficients, it's not. And we, in one of our papers, we, in appendix, I think we, we mentioned what's the difference between, between the two. Okay, and uh, so this is one, the definition of this. Now let's look at some examples of these groups which appear here, and you will see what kind of dualities we talk about. So these are, uh, open unit disk, and then let's look at two groups. So H three with compact support D U P one. You can compute it. It's the functions on the boundary mod the functions on the whole disk, and then I will just write here plus. It's not really a plus. It's an extension, but it's, it's easier for me to write this way. So. Later on, you will see actually the precise extensions when I talk about the proof. So we have this uh, computation for the compactly supported one, and for H1, which should be dual to that, we get uh, QP1 here, so they adapt to two. We get uh, OD 
mod K and also kind of uh, sum with Galois cohomology. Okay, so you see that these two groups seem to be in duality. So duals and y, so there seems to be some type of Galois duality here. So it's a Galois, Galois duality. And now plus this coherent duality. So coherent duality. And this is going, this is going to be happening all the time. That is, we are going to have to mix uh, Galois duality uh, for QP, QP vector spaces and, uh, and coherent duality. So the, uh, so what kind of, so this is actually ser duality. So um, this object here is actually uh, H uh, one with compact support of, uh, of uh, O. And uh, this one here, is going to be H zero of uh, omega one. So we have a duality between these two. Okay. So now the, the whole problem for us was how to how to mix this uh, leave these two types of dualities with the duality for for these groups. The third remark I want to make that uh, this of course probably there is nothing special about the curve. So this. This theorem should hold in any dimension for any d. And what what form should it take? So let me write this. Uh, it probably has to be derived because of topology, which 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 I'm going to kind of ignore for this statement. But just uh, for the numer numerology of this, so we should have something of this form. 2d plus 2 minus i here. So we are pairing to 2d plus 2. 2 comes from Galois dimension and d from the geometric dimension. So uh, x, uh, qp, and then I should have here 1d one, one, plus 1, right? d plus 1 minus j. Okay. So I think that should be the expected statement in, in any dimension. Okay. Let me pass now to, to the proof of this. So we are in the case of curves. In the case of curves, a lot of things simplify, of course. So we are actually going to use proper curves. Uh, so let's start with the proof of the uh, one. Proof for proper curves. Maybe I should also mention here that uh, because uh, this comes to mind when you look at the shape of this theorem that in the algebraic category, so for, for algebraic varieties, we know that such a theorem is, is true. Okay, so uh, take, uh, and the proof for the proper proper curves is is something uh, like so proper smooth. Ah, uh, I know I said smooth. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, how does uh, how does this work? So the the first point is that we have geometric. Poincare duality in this case. So first of all, the, uh, I should mention that both terms, in for proper curves, both terms are finite. They get finite objects. We have geometric Poincare duality by uh, uh, Gaber, Mann, Lucas Mann, and Zavialov. So we have that H I xc, so x over k is my curve proper, uh, qp j is isomorphic to h2 minus i xc qp 
1 minus j dual. Okay, then we, we take Hodgkin's third spectral sequence. And this end down. So this sequence is uh, compatible with pairings. We have E, A, B, 2, H, I, G, K, H, B, X, C, Q, P, J, plus to H, I plus P, X, Q, P, J. Okay, so uh, uh, for the so this spectral sequence will not degenerate at uh, at D two necessarily, but we have only uh, uh, we have uh, zero, one, and two here for non-trivial groups. So in fact, you can analyze it and using Galois duality. Now, let me just spell it out. We have H. I, G, K, Q, P, J, dual to H, to minus I, G, K, Q, P, 1 minus J. We can finish the argument that we have a duality on the, on the abutment as well. Okay, so this works exactly like in the algebraic, algebraic setup. It's the same, the same argument. Okay, now uh, what about the general case? So, proper case. So, let's say this is step zero of the proof. Now, uh, step, step one. So, in the step one, we, we have a reduction that it's enough to, enough to show the theorem for what we call after. Uh, Coleman wide opens. So what is a wide? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What? It's true, true in any dimension. Sorry, I I said, uh -huh, I did, I I just said it's a curve. Yeah, okay, now this was, this was, it doesn't have to be a curve. It works, it, this works in any dimension. Yes, any dimension. The same, the same thing. Okay, uh, wide opens. Okay, so what is it? So for us, it's going to be a complement in a proper, yeah, okay, so here too. Proper, um, Hmm? Uh, okay, so let me just say, okay, curve and curve, and here let me just say that works in any dimension, works for D as well. The same argument. In this is different. Okay. Okay. So complement in a proper uh, geometrically connected move curve x bar over k of finitely many closed disks. Disks over k. Okay. So once you once we prove this for wide opens, then we can pass to the dagger, dagger varieties and to Stein varieties by a limit argument. By a limit. Argument. So the key for us is to treat these wide opens. 
Okay, but if you have wide open, now you have this structure coming, coming with this definition. So let's look what we can use here. So x is going to be wide open over k. So then uh, we can write x bar, which remember was the uh, proper smooth curve, which contained x as the union. We can cover it with x itself and a number, so m open disk. So these are open disk, disjoint. And such that we, the intersections with X are open analyzed. Okay, so we have now covering by of X bar uh, by X and uh, disk, and the intersections are open analyzed, and that's it. So we have a Maya Vitoris sequence. And using this for both sides of cohomologies, which, are, which have the right factoriality, we reduce to the case of proper and smooth curves, which we have already done, which is done. Then to the open disks and open annulize. So the, the, the case of uh, annuli is actually uh, just a little bit more difficult than the op case of open disk, or in fact, maybe not at all, if you, if you will see what happens in a moment. So I'm just going to focus on open disk. So now we are working for, on a, for an open disk. Okay, so now I have to erase something. Okay. So uh, for a disk, we are going to construct filtration of the of the cohomologies, and you see that the, on the graded pieces, what you get is coherent cohomology mixed with with uh, Galois cohomology, and you would like to pair them in some obvious way. But you have to know that you can do that. That is that your pairing, when it's going to actually pass through that filtration, is going to respect it. And you also have to know that on the graded pieces, it gives you the pairing which you want. So coherent plus Galois. And that's a non-trivial computation, actually. Which is a type of computation you see a lot in number theory. So explicit reciprocity, explicit reciprocity law. I raised it really badly, huh? It's okay. I can see everything actually. <laughs> can you okay, I will try to write, but if it's problematic then Okay, let's look at the uh, <clears throat> So we are trying to do it for a disk. Open disk. So the next step is reduction to the ghost circle. Okay, so what is this ghost circle? So I have my disk, which is over k, and I can look also at, the, at y, which is by definition the boundary of the disk. So. I will call that ghost circle. So recall that if you look at the functions on, on the boundaries, so this is called rubbering. Rubbering in one variable. I don't know whether I will need it, but just in case I need it, call it T. Okay, so now how we, do, how we pass from the disk to to the boundary where we have a commutative diagram. A commutative diagram connecting the two cohomologies. So we have cohomology of D, 
Now it injects actually to canonically to the cohomology of of the Gauss circle. Then I pair it with compactly supported cohomology of D. And I have here the compactly supported cohomology of the boundary. No, sorry, cohomology of the boundary. Minus one. Yeah, the same twist. And the natural map goes in this direction and it's a surjection. So I have injection here, surjection here. Then I have a pairing which goes into homology with compact support. And here we are one degree lower on Y. The same twist. And this is also subjective. So this diagram commutes and reduces us. Uh, in, there, there is extra argument needed here, but uh, I will mention it later what, what is needed. But you can, you can reduce to, to proving duality just uh, for, for the object on the level of Y. As you can see, the pairing is now of different form. There is now a compactly supported cohomology, and the degree is one lower. So let me state exactly what we have. So step four, we have the, which we, let's call it DRM0, which is the duality for the Gauss circle. For Gauss circle. So it has the following form. We have a trace isomorphism, the trace map, but now it's, uh, from H3 of Y, QP2 still, as before, to QP. So that's the uh, top degree. And the pairing, uh, which is perfect, so the pairing uh, H, Y, I, Y, QP, J, and H three minus I P two minus J going to H three Y Q P two going by the trace to Q P that pairing is perfect in the same sense as before is that we have topological isomorphism. And this is the one we actually prove. Uh, compute, compute, uh, um, we prove duality for, for the Gauss circle. Okay, so let me sketch the proof of this. So first the trace map. So you have trace defined in this way. So H free of the boundary. We compute that that's actually isomorphic to H2 Galois of QP, QP1. So now we have the Galois trace into QP. So that's our trace map. Okay, now to deal with, with this, uh, we, pro we produce filtration on, on uh, now we have just one cohomology. There is no compact support, so we filter the uh, the cohomology here. It's an ascending filtration, and this filtration has two sources. One source is Hodgkin's spectral sequence, as you would expect. So it will give us Galois groups, but the other source comes from the syntomic syntomic sequence, which computes a periodic. Uh, Periodic uh, uh, proetal cohomology mutation on H I I. And it is this uh, syntomic sequence which will give the coherent, coherent uh, parts. So now I want to draw a big diagram. Uh, maybe I have enough space. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So the filtration, maybe not. Maybe I put it just here. The filtration. So it's an ascending filtration. We start with F three. Then we have F two and F one and F zero, which is just zero. Okay. And uh, I will erase, try to draw the diagram. Okay. Um, okay, so how did we construct this uh, this filtration? So let me put this diagram here. So we start with F three, which is the whole the whole space X I Y two P J. Okay, then if you look at what happens with Hoshkill's spectral sequence, so he is going, this sequence is going to come from Hoshkill's spectral sequence. Then we get HI minus one Galois, H1 YC QPJ. And in the kernel, we will get uh, HI, Galois of H0 YC QPJ. So that, that is, of course, just QPJ. Okay. So that's one filtration comes from the Hochschild cell. Now, uh, this proetal group comes naturally, uh, can be thought of as a syntomic, syntomic group, and it come, uh, then it comes with a natural sequence associated to it. So let's write it here, maybe. So this is symptomic sequence. So what we have here on the left uh, is uh, O, Y, C over C, J minus one. But then we have to apply, uh -huh. so let me write, write, write down this sequence first. And then here we have QP, QP, J minus one. So if you remember maybe syntomic, syntomic cohomology, uh, then uh, uh, this, this object here comes from uh, the RAM data, and this object here comes from Hyodokato data. So the RAM, the RAM data, so the RAM cohomology data, and here is the Hyodokato cohomology data. Okay, <clears throat> with some eigenspace uh, uh, operations. Okay, now I apply cohomology to it, and in fact, uh, Galois cohomology and this sequence turns out stays exact. So, we'll do that. We still are, we still are exact. And then we define uh, F2 ij as the pullback of this diagram here. So we have a Cartesian, Cartesian diagram. So we get here uh, the same object. And this will be, by definition, our F1. By definition. OK. So one more term maybe I should write. So what we get here is the same object as this one.
Okay, so we got this kind of diagram. And uh, now it looks very nice, right? Because uh, let's see what we get for the graded pieces. So F2, F, uh, F3, F, F2 is, uh, is, so these are all exact. So this is uh, Galois cohomology here. So you, you are reduced to Galois pairings. Now F2, F, F1. Now this is, this is uh, maybe I should mention maybe here, we have coherent cohomology inside and then Galois cohomology. But because of Tate's computations, actually when, when, you, when you evaluate this Galois cohomology, you still get coherent cohomology, but we've uh, descended down to K instead of C here, okay? So you, you are reduced to, to uh, I mean, if, if everything works as you think it works, your pairing, you are reduced to actually uh, coherent cohomology here. And uh, where else? Ah, F2, F1, okay, and F1 is again now Galois cohomology, so you know, you know how to work with that. Okay, so now we just have to prove that everything works as we think. So here's the key fact we proved, which is uh, explicit reciprocity law. So we recall that the cl classically what we mean by explicit reciprocity law was a computation of a, a Galois, a Galois a cup product uh, via differential differential objects. So this is the same type of uh, this is the same type of construction and computation. So we have to identify this uh, this product on uh, on portal uh, cohomology via differential structure. So we proved that. The pairing which you had in in that there and there, so the pairing is compatible with this filtration. One thing, and uh, on the associated grading. It induces Galois pairings. The Galois pairing. Plus coherent pairing. Okay, so what did I mean as I try to say a little bit what I mean by this coherent pairing? So we have a perfect pairing between the robot rings uh, and also when you mod them out by C uh, as well. But uh, if you take, if, if you add that to that taking cohomology in degree zero or one, Galois cohomology, you get the same objects but over K. So just why? So you are uh, still doing coherent, coherent duality that way. So these are the perfect pairings we get. I, oh yeah, I forgot about this here. Then you have to take the traces. Thank you. Thank you because we want the QP duality. Yes. Uh, and uh, third point. Which, which we need is that the filtration in degree one is orthogonal to filtration in degree two. And this is the thing which, which I mentioned we needed to reduce actually from the disk to the ghost circle. So you need this kind of property. So this is orthogonal in the pairing. We have to prove it. So um, the type of computations which go into it go back to the paper of Bloch and Cato. who uh, identified et al. pairings via syntomic pairings in their paper on Tamagawa numbers. And, but then there was a lot of computations of similar sort in other setup. And I think most relevant to us was the work of Benoit and Ribeiro. Okay. Uh, maybe I should mention what is this pairing explicitly here. So this is 
taking residue a p of f g a d t. Anyway, everything can be made, made exp uh, extremely explicit in this in this story for um, for the curve, and this was actually not quite a uh, enjoyable enjoyable thing to do. Okay, so now I have left half an hour. No, fifteen minutes. Okay, sorry, I thought I <laughs> sorry. So I, I am going to tell you something about the geometric, geometric story, but I need to erase a lot. I'm not sure if this will work now. Maybe I can use this, no? No? Okay. Do this. Okay, so um, let's look at the geometric duality. So I am still uh, in the case of curves. So we are going to look at examples. So first example. So X is proper smooth over C. And then we know that we have geometric duality, as we mentioned above, of the Poincaré type. OK. So this is perfect pairing. OK, and uh, second. Example is let's look again at the open disk. Okay, so this time I would like to actually compute it, compute these groups. Okay, so for H zero D Q P J, we just get QPJ for H1, D, QPJ, we get OD mod C, J minus 1 for H2, C, D, QPJ, we get QP, J minus 1, and then again we get some extension with O the boundary mod O D J minus one. So again you have some QP vector spaces and CP vector spaces appearing and uh, everything else is zero, so zero otherwise. Okay, so you would try to see again that uh, uh, what you see here is now QP vector space Q, so QP duality, just for vector spaces, some kind of duality. And then we see coherent duality again here. And so this is the product of D over D of OD, OD over C. The same thing we have. Seen, seen above, and uh, the only problem is that these dualities have completely mixed up uh, uh, degrees. That is, they are not going to feed into Poincaré duality. So, but uh, of course, they might feed into into Verdier type duality. So then, the question is, in which category should we work? So, which category contains QP vector spaces and CP vector spaces and is reasonably rigid? So uh, we went to the vector spaces by capital A, V, and capital S to take sense, to make sense out of it. So to make sense, we pass to V S, the category of vector space. 
So what is it for us? This will be just shifts of QP vector spaces on perfectoid spaces over over C and uh, let's say it's in V topology. Okay, so if we do that, then what happens? So let's look at Holmes uh, and X in this category. Higher X will vanish, so just X one uh, and zero remain. So we have the obvious group, two obvious groups. So then we have maybe not so obvious fact that there is no maps between GA, which whose C, point, C points are, are C, uh, to QP1. So that's one fact. And another is that if you look at X groups between T and uh, QP now, then you get T actually. And this is generated by, by the extension B Chris plus chi equal P G A and U P one. Okay. So that's the computation. Now if you fit this computation into try to play with it and try to match this with what we are getting here you get uh, uh, something which makes sense now. So H2 compactly supported, D, Q, P, J, now is an extension of home from H0, D, Q, P, 2 minus J to Q, P, 1. And here we will get X to 1 from H1, D, Q, P, 2 minus J, Q, P, 1, and 0. So you can check that this actually really gives us uh, this object over there. And for the other way, so H1, D, Q, P, J is actually isomorphic to X1 of H to C, D, Q, P, 2 minus J, Q, P, 1 again. OK. So these are the isomorphisms which we get. And that's our duality for, uh, for the geometric open disk. OK, so now the conjecture to make here is obvious. So what would we conjecture? So uh, I stated for partially proper, it's probably over optimistic, but let's state it. It seems that in our computations, we can do a lot of things for time spaces, but not so much for partially proper. So it seems maybe, maybe too much to ask. So smooth, say, dagger over C, uh, connected dimension D. Then we. Uh, Conjecture that the proetal cohomology of X QPJ coefficients is isomorphic to R home in the VS category of R gamma proetal with compact support X and here QP D plus one minus J 
uh, argam uh, okay uh, q p one and everything should be shifted by two d okay I think I got the indices right I hope okay so that's our conjecture in any dimension and our theorem which means I state the second theorem. Is that this holds conjecture holds in dimension one? Okay, so how much time I have left to five minutes, seven minutes? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in our original computations for dimension one, we actually really use the fact that we are in dimension one. So we use special properties of curves, in particular the property that in, uh, in some sense, locally, everything can be represented by, uh, by, an ob by objects which have uh, good reduction, so good reduction models over the vid vectors of small k bar. So this type of uh, computations, but in fact, uh, what we, we have now uh, is, a, uh, is a strategy that may work in any dimension. I just want to present it. We don't have a proof, it's just a strategy in any dimension. So um, let's look at the strategy. Strategy for, for this. Yeah. Any question? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I just want, so basically I was going to say it now. Okay, so strategy. Okay, so uh, the step, yeah, exactly. The, the step, first step is the geometrization. So we start with X over C as above. The first step is the geometrization of the comparison theorem. By which I mean comparison theorem between uh, uh, pro etalco homology and uh, symptomic homology, so what we call uh, basic comparison theorem. So symptomic homology is built from Hyodokato and, and the RAM, that's the one we want, we want to deal with. So geometrization of the comparison uh, theorem. So this was done uh, in a joint work with, uh, with Pierre and the so a star is here or nothing or compact support and uh, we have x and qpr is uh, isomorphic and this is isomorphic in the vs category with symptomic homology same same uh, star here x and r twist and in this work we are doing here, we assume that R is very big. So like R is larger than two of the dimension, then in fact, you don't have to truncate anything. So um, there is no problem with, uh, with, with putting, pro in fact, there's no problem with putting either side into the VS category. The problem is in, because here you can just define everything for sim sympathetic or, or perfect. The perfect algebra is just by base change, so no problem. Here it's, it's, it's a different trick to, to put it into the category. Uh, so this, this consists of some data of Hyodokato cohomology and uh, the Bideram plus cohomology. But you can also, is, so is, it, this easily gets into the category of VS. What, what is not so obvious how to do is is uh, is to, const to put the geometry on the on the morphism, but but you can you can do that and it was uh, we, so here we used we used uh, some computations which were done also in the uh, pieces of uh, Sarajev. But so this 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 is done. So this is done in many dimensions. So that's okay. Now the step two now in this would be in the following. So you construct from this symptomic homology now. So we like symptomic homology because it has familiar object, Hyodokato and the RAM. So we, we take symptomic homology now and we want to construct from it. So 
let's call this uh, uh, E star. And I'm going to ignore the twist from now on because I will not get them right anyway. And uh, so this is going to be a complex of all modules on the Farquhar-Fontaine curve. So uh, complex. In fact, we are not quite sure in which category to work. So certainly complex of quasi-coherent uh, O F F modules on the Farc from 10 curve. But we need something more because we want uh, our home, uh, the relative, I mean the local uh, our home, to actually be just home into O. So we need something like torsion free, something or, or something of that sort. Yeah, torsion free maybe. It's not quite clear to me in which category we should work, so it 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 will work well. But I can tell you what we need. So uh, we need this construction. Maybe I can leave it here and I can use that one on the side. No, okay. So we do it uh, for uh, the compactly supported and not compactly supported. And this, this uh, correspondence should have this property that the cohomology now computed of this complex is the original one. So if, you, if your x is proper, for example, then what you get is actually really a complex of vector bundles. But that's not going to be in that case, we, we, we will not have finite conditions here. And then we have to show that if you look at what you attach to symptomic homology, then it's actually isomorphic to our home in this category, T, which I'm talking about here, which I don't know yet what it should be really, um, of the object you attach to the compactly supported fellow. And these are maps into, into O. Okay, and uh, so let's call this uh, this object this object uh, epsilon c dual. So we want to show this, and in step four, uh, we just compute now. So we compute that r gamma x f f of this dual complex is isomorphic to our home on the curve of the E R gamma of X R R of into O. And that's isomorphic again. So here we need analog of Anschutz. Uh, how do you spell Anschutz? Anschutz, Anschutz, Lebra. So they work with Banacolme spaces. We need something here for QBC, with something called QBC, so quasi Banacolme spaces. So again, no finite conditions, but some control over the non-finite non part. So this, should, this is just our home in VS from the cohomology chief of, of this object here, and the QP, so I lost some twist along the way. But uh, basically, that's, that's, that's the argument. And it kind of soups out what we did in a more elegant way, what we did in dimension, in dimension one. And it's, in, it's independent of the dimension we are in. We just have to construct this, this object. So the first step, as I mentioned, that's, that's done. So uh, step two was construction, construction of these objects. And I think that this is basically also done. And, uh, and now it's not clear again in which category we should, we should for us to work here to get this. Or this home, we want this to be just, the computations we did were just with home. So we don't want to derive anything here. And once we have that, uh, we still need to extend this to QBCs, the Anschutz Lebra, which, which remains to be done. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any question or comments? No? 
Yes. So in the first. Oh, thank you. So, so in the first part of your talk, um, does everything go through with um, integral coefficients? It seems that your trace construction works just as well. But is there a pairing which is perfect? Uh, basically, we cannot do anything with integral coefficients because uh, so the reason we take prior tile with QP coefficients is because when we compute locally, we compute a, a tile with QP coefficients and use uh, rational periodic Hodge theory. Okay? So uh, we did computations in the past for a tile cohomology with QP coefficients, and then locally you have to use uh, not maybe an integral theory, but integral theory up to control of the denominator. And uh, uh, we have some results for some special cases for a tile, but still we've just QP coefficients, so we basically never do ZP coefficients. Outside of some special cases, we did it for Dreamfeld space, I think, where we used uh, we used prismatic stuff, and then and then it worked. But it's very special, uh, kind of ordinary type, of, uh, ordinary in the sense of the Rambit type variety. Was there a question or comment on Zoom? No. Yeah. Uh, Yi Chao, please ask your question. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, so, does your conject conjecture in the geometric case imply the conjecture in the arithmetic case? Well, we are hoping, but we didn't do the computations because, uh, in fact, uh, we discovered this thing only the. Well, no, I mean, we didn't. That's not the way our argument go. But this is the way you would think it would go. So it would be true. <laughs> But we didn't have time to check it. We didn't have time to check it. I just want to mention maybe one thing which I didn't mention, that uh, this, this duality here, why, why should it hold is crucial, is because uh, you can think of this object, as a, this object as a modification. So this is modification of R gamma Hyodokato, which is phi n module type of object on the curve modification of the object associated to that via the lattice R gamma uh, B the RAM, B the RAM plus. Okay, so philosophically that's what it is, this object here. And, uh, and then this object is a similar thing where you put Cs everywhere. And then you would think that the duality on modification data would transfer to the duality on the, on the associated object. And hopefully it does that way. That's why we believe this. Other question? From Zoom? No. So let's thank Visha again.